Hello again, my friends. Man alive. It has been a long week since I've talked to you last. Honestly, I feel like it's been a long month. I know it is kind of that season, right? Honestly, to make changes and reevaluate and set resolutions and all that. But it has just seemed like it's been tenfold almost. I have felt a lot of confidence and reassurance in some of the choices that I'm making but I've also felt a lot of opposition and struggle and just heartache and grief as well and the overwhelm honestly has gotten me in the scriptures more than I normally would be honestly just I think because I'm desperate to find some relief to get some of that peace that only Christ can offer so I wanted just to take a few minutes to share with you a couple things that have stuck out to me this week as I've studied. First, I wanted to share a quote from Russell M. Nelson that says, Seek and expect miracles. Now, this reminds me of a scripture story, and it's one that has always fascinated me. And that's Mary Magdalene. Many of us know the story. She spent significant time with Christ. Following him during his ministry, learning at his feet, receiving his forgiveness firsthand. He would have, she would have known his face. She would have recognized his voice. And yet, Standing at an empty tomb, she didn't recognize him. She thought he was the gardener. In retelling the story, Emily Bell Freeman made the comment that she thinks that Mary's lack of recognition stemmed from not expecting to see him there. She did not expect to see him there. It's that word expect that really has stuck with me. Especially when we think about seeking and expecting miracles, right? Like we can rely on that. That's an expectation we can rely on and it will always be there. And yet, She wasn't expecting to see them there. Now, you could think of this very literally, right? Like, I think you could think this way with his disciples as well. You see it later on where they don't recognize him as well. And there's just this gap in their knowledge, right? There's this little bit of lack where there's just, you forget. You just are, they're just grieving and they forget that, oh, there's a resurrection. They don't know exactly what that looks like or what the timeline of that would be. And that's true. As true as that is, (laughs) I see it a little deeper than that. I feel it, honestly. It feels so relatable to me because here I am. She doesn't expect to see him there, doesn't recognize him. How often am I like that? How often do I do that? God's love, which Christ is the embodiment of, is a constant. It is always there. But I don't always see him. So it just helps me to think, like, how can I be better at that? How can I, what's, what's hindering that expectation? And how can I better have that mindset? Like, if I were to approach life (laughs) with a little bit more of that expectation that he will be there with me through it, then maybe, just maybe, I would be better at recognizing him more often. That his hand would be prevalent, right? It'd be present 
before my eyes. I wanted to share a quick story from Robert M. Daines. In our church, we have what we call callings, and it's just basically different volunteer positions that, yeah, nobody in our churches is paid. Um, none of you know our bishops and, and priests and things, they're not paid. It's something that we are asked to do or called to do. And so this is his experience. He says, quote, a few years ago, I got a calling I didn't feel up to. I awoke early, nervous, but with a phrase in mind I had not heard before. That to serve in this church is to stand in the river of God's love for his children. This church is a work party of people with picks and shovels trying to help clear the channel for the river of God's love to reach his children at the end of the row. Whoever you are, whatever your past, there is room for you in this church. Grab a pick and a shovel and join the team. Help carry his love to his children, and some of it will splash on you. And I just love the thought of that again, like that that river flow, right? That constant that is God's love. And I love, love, love that we have the opportunity to to do all we can to recognize him, but also as we serve others, it will happen naturally as well. So if you're if you feel like I have, where you, or like Mary did, where it's just you you just are struggling to see like where are you in all this? This is why is this happening, right? Like how am I expected to deal with all this? Like you're just you just need him just want more Christ and you can't see him there I just love that one of the easiest places to start is just to serve as we help others feel his love we will as well and that's it for now until next time have the best week